I've been told that if I stand here, people see and hear me better. So, I have a question for you. It does require a mental response and a hand lifting, perhaps. How many of you can remember a moment of receiving a gift and being grateful? You can all remember that. So don't leave that moment. Think about that moment for a minute. Think about that moment and what that moment meant to you. Perhaps it was a memory of your childhood. Or maybe you were a teenager. Maybe you were a young adult and, and somebody did something unexpected. Maybe you were a parent and someone stepped in to help with the child. Maybe it's as you got older, you were remembered by your grandchildren. Think with me about how that moment of gratitude made you really feel. What were some of the feelings that that memory brought you? Think with me about that. You see, because I think our gratitude actually is keyed into our hearts. I'm, I'm going to tell you that I think gratitude is a spiritual element in every person's life, no matter if you're a Christian or not. Gratitude is something we all can either have or choose not to have. Now, I have to tell you, I, I'm, the, I'm a fan of a particular children's movie. And maybe some of you remember Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, not the one that came out about 15 years ago that was ridiculously bad. <laughs> but the one that's older than some of you in the room. You remember those children as they won their golden tickets and you met, you met them all because the writer of that movie wanted you to understand who those children were and what they were bringing to the table. And one of them stood out, I think, to almost all of us as someone who probably needed a good spanking. <laughs> it was Veronica. Her name was really Veruca Salt. And she suffered from what I call I want itis. Any of you know anybody that has I want itis? I want this, I want that, I want that, I want, you know. Uh, and, and it's really all about me, and I don't really care about what you want because you don't matter. That was Baruch. And that person took over the screen when she won, and everybody knew she was not going to be the great woman. You didn't even have to know what the competition was. When you met her, it became all about her and having it her way. You know this story. In fact, you know this story real well. You know that there were five gold tickets and that there were four winners who weren't so good. Some of them weren't so bad, but none of them were really good until, of course, we got to Charm. And when they won, the bedridden grandpa got out of bed and danced with gratitude because he knew what that ticket was going to mean to his family. Have you ever been so grateful for something that you wanted to dance? Oh yeah. I thought about showing you a video, but every time we try to show a video, it gets complicated and 
and and my worker who's gone to help her mom with children for next week says it never works right. So I did it. But there is a dance on YouTube. If you do YouTube at all, type into your browser the gratitude dance and find the one with 40 million clicks. It should be first. And dance. Because gratitude is about being filled with joy and having our lives become a dance. I have to tell you that I'm really hopeful for this sermon, our worship service next week, and the sermon on the, the 20th. Because this is about being grateful. And it starts with our attitude. It starts with our deciding, say, I decide, I decide. to be grateful. grateful. And do you know what? That's true all of the time. 100%, say 100%. 100%. You choose to be grateful. You know, I was thinking about Dan Sheets since he walked in, and I'm going to talk about him from the pulpit today because he walked in, and he made me think of this thing. He is a public servant. We know that. He's the mayor of Monroe. And I'm not going to tell you to vote for Dan, because most of you aren't eligible to vote for Dan. I know where you live. Being from Chicago, that wouldn't be a problem for me. But, you know, for you all who live on a slice, you can't vote for Dan. But you might if you lived in Monroe. And I'm going to tell you a great secret about this election. I know Dan well enough to know that if he wins, he's going to be grateful. And if he loses, he's probably going to be grateful. <laughs> I'm not talking for Michelle. I'm talking for Dan. I knew that I would get that comment flow well from Michelle. Why? Because we choose our gratitude. We choose to be grateful. We choose to say, thank you, Lord. Say that, thank you, Lord. Thank you. See, everybody who did that chose to do it. And if you chose not to do it, we're all wondering why. Yes. <laughs> but not just you. So, this idea of being able to choose and to decide to be grateful, you're going, well, you don't know about my life. Well, I'm your pastor. I know about a lot of your lives. And I know that every person in this room, including Bob and Nancy, be sure and greet Bob and Nancy. Um, they, they, they managed to come today. Uh, posing for pictures. They're posing for pictures. Even. You can go sit next to them and have a picture with them. I did that earlier. Just so you know, I did take them out for the funeral. But, but Every one of us can be grateful. We can be grateful for Nan. I'm pretty sure this is Nancy's I'm doing. Yeah. Aren't you grateful for her sense of humor? Yes. I mean, isn't that awesome? They real nice looking. They know what I'm talking about. So, I mean, Christina said with lots of both of them, and I didn't even, I looked over there, I didn't even. See but actually, I'm going to tell you. I actually have been praying about this series of worship services changing your lives. Now, why do I say that? Well, because I think almost all of us can afford to be more grateful. Life's hard. How many of you have noticed that sometimes life is hard? And sometimes stuff happens that you really don't want to be grateful for. Until you really look at it. 
And then you might choose to be because something worse could have happened or something good comes out of whatever's bad. There's always a glimmer for gratefulness. You still have that thing in your mind that you thought out that you're grateful for? Here are some of the things that I think that that memory brought to this room. A sense of peacefulness. A sense of contentedness. A sense of warmness and friendliness. A sense of generosity. A sense of joy. My guess is there's enough here in this room that you can fill in more of the things, more of the feelings that you came to have as you thought about that thing you're grateful for. I'm going to tell you a secret. To not be grateful is to be prideful. To not be grateful means that you are only thinking about yourself. You see, because if you're being grateful, you might be thinking about yourself, but you're expounding it out. Ingratitude is called ingratitude because it is focused on the end. Take your hand and put it in. Our gratitude goes out. Now, I have to tell you that for over 2,000 years, gratitude has been a virtue the church has talked about. You'd think we'd be more grateful. And why does the church talk about it? Because Jesus talked about it. Because the Bible talks about it. Over a hundred times, mm -hmm. there are scriptures that compel us, invite us, ask us, tell us, plead with us, direct us to be grateful. Say a hundred times. Think about that for a minute. Some of you are parents and you had to tell your children a hundred times to do something. Did it change their lives? I'm telling you that Jesus wants this to change our lives. God wants our gratefulness to change our lives. Here's what some of those scriptures say. First Chronicles 16:34. You're gonna you're gonna see a, a, a recurring phrase. Uh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. I'm not gonna read all of the scriptures that have all of them because you know there is a football game today. <laughs> but it's raining. Here's another one. Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Now, the psalmist didn't tell you to give thanks. He just said, you know, it's good to give thanks to the Lord. The psalmist wrote in chapter 95, let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise. Psalm 100. This is one of my favorites. And, and when we read this in church, we never, you know, we're a Christian church beside this press. We never get too excited about anything. I love this one. It says, shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. And we read it like that. We read it just like I read it to you. Shout! Sorry, Brad. Didn't mean to hurt your ears, Barbara. Shout to the Lord. Thanks. Psalm 95 again. Let us come with, with thanksgiving. Go back to Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord. Sorry. I have to pick it up so I can read it all to you. 
That happens sometimes, I hear. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He has made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Psalm 105, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim God's goodness. In other words, when we give thanks, we're proclaiming God's goodness. And you might not even have to say God's name. But more than a virtue and more than a command from Scripture, I'm going to tell you that Brad was absolutely right. I'm, I'm telling you this. Brad was absolutely right in his communion meditation. I love it when Brad does this to me. You should love it too because it probably shortens the sermon. <laughs> Brad told you all the blessings and good things that happen when you give thanks. Mm -hmm. I'll try not to duplicate his. I have three pages for I don't think he used that one. I'm not going to read all three pages for Gratitude is a key to happiness. And I love it. I argue this from a scientific angle. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If your faith doesn't tell you that this is good, let your head tell you this is good. Happiness is a good thing. An implicit assumption that many of us hold is that happiness depends on happenings, by what happens in our lives. We believe that success in life makes people happier. Yet, we know that that's not true. Yes, success can add to happiness, but happiness was chosen before the success. In fact, what we have found is that happiness makes good things happen. So even if you want to be selfish here, choosing to be thankful, choosing gratitude makes your life better. Listen to this. In several studies, depression has been shown to be strongly inversely related to gratitude. The more grateful a person is, the less depressed they are. People come to me for counseling and I figure out that they're depressed. I tell them to go write down a hundred things that make them smile. They come back the next week and they've written three. Ooh, I said, go out to the outer office and bring me a hundred things that make you smile. Tell me what makes you happy. Don't tell. That doesn't make me grateful. <laughs> anyway, it's snowing apparently outside. We are not going to point the camera out there. It made Carlin happy, I know. <laughs> Listen to this. Deborah Norville used to be an anchor on Today, and she wrote a book called Thank You, Pal. Here's the laundry list of some of the things the study concluded. People who are consciously grateful, in other words, People who wake up in the morning and say, I am going to be grateful today. Say that. I am going to be grateful today. People who do that feel better about their lives as a whole. But not just as a whole. Those people are more optimistic, more energetic, more enthusiastic, more determined, more interested, more joyful. They feel stronger about handling challenges. They seem to exercise more, nearly an hour and a half more a week. They had fewer illnesses. They got more sleep. That's because they exercised more. Uh, they made progress toward important personal goals. They were more likely to have helped someone else. They were perceived by others as more generous and helpful. 
They were less envious of those with more possessions and their lives, this is my favorite one, their lives were less cluttered. Now, lots of people have said things about gratitude. Listen to these things. Robert Brault says, there's no such thing as gratitude unexpressed. If it's unexpressed, it is plain old fashioned ingratitude. Mm -hmm. If a fellow isn't thankful for what he's got, he isn't likely to be thankful for what he's going to get. Gratitude has a quality similar to electricity. It has to be produced and discharged and used up in order to exist at all. There is no greater difference between men than between grateful and ungrateful. The hardest arithmetic to master is that which enables us to count our blessings. So again, I ask you, what are you grateful for? What are you thankful for? Like you, my list has lots of major things. I'm grateful for salvation. You? Yeah. yeah. No? yeah. Um, I'm pretty grateful for life in general. I'm grateful for family and friends. And if you've been watching on Facebook, you know I'm particularly grateful for one little guy. We need to get better at spotting some little things in life to be good at. Because all of us are pretty good at the big things. Now, I wrote this down because I happen to be holding a baby. Do you know babies have a smell? That's something to be grateful for. You know I like sunrises and sunsets. Are you grateful for when the sun comes up? Yeah. Even if you can't see it like today, I looked. Messages from loved ones. Christmas cards. Text message from somebody who loves you. Try to cover all of the generation. Not long ago, I asked people, what is something you would say gives you pure joy? Some of the responses included. You might be able to tell where I was at when I asked this question. Being in the woods and getting the trophy bunch. Getting a hole in one with witnesses. <laughs> Being on top of a mountain. Being on a cliff overlooking the ocean. When I asked the people this question, nobody ever said going through tons of trials. facing uphill climbs all the time. We all saw greater than that. Questions as we start our month of Thanksgiving. Are you willing to make your attitude one of gratitude? To wake up every day and say, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad, in it, knowing that not everything that happens that day is going to make you smile. But God can, and God will, and you can. Psalm 106, verses 1 and 2 says it this way Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's faithful love endures forever. For who can list the glorious miracles of the Lord? Who can ever praise him enough? So the question of the day, what needs to change in your life for you to become more thankful?
as you think about that. Think about it being taught with thanksgiving, not just thanksgiving. Mm -hmm.